Hello, and welcome back to part 7. In this part we'll be going through the entity system, at least uh, the main parts of it. The entity system is going to, um, to control the entities. Entities are objects in the game which move, think, have physics and other stuff like that. For example, a box, a plane, car, anything that really is an object in a game. We want a folder for our objects. Each object is going to be one file, one Lua file. So a box would have a box.lua file inside this entity. Tees. Yeah. We also need a a header Lua file, as I like to call it. Entities.lua, which is going to be our module. The module for the entities. To load a another Lua file inside a game uh, project, we need to use the require function inside the love.lua function in main.lua. You can use it anywhere else, but uh, since we only need to call it once, put it in the love.load function. Require entities.lua, which is that file. So, yep. And we open that file and we start coding. First of all, we need to set some values for our new module. Uh, we need a table, first and foremost. We're gonna call it ENTS, because that's the same as in Garry's mod, if you're used to Garry's mod coding. And entities in Garry's mod. Uh, you will probably not get this color when you write ENTS in, uh, in your Lua files. That is because I have installed the Garry's mod uh, uh, add-on for Notepad++. Go ahead and Google that if you want it too. It just looks better. Uh, we also need a, a table or list, as one might call it, that is going to contain uh, all our active objects. We also need a path for our objects, so we know where the objects are, or the entities. That's going to be the end. TTs folder. TTs. TTs. We also need a register to register the templates for each uh, entity that we want to use in the game. And an unique ID for each entity, which just starts at zero. We also need an instant startup function, which is going to be run when. Uh, when the module first first gets loaded. We're gonna put stuff in here in the next part, which is going to be the, the register uh, stuff. We don't need to think about it right now. We only want to get this, this uh, main part down on the paper. Function ends.create is going to be the function we run to spawn a new object. We need a name, a X position and a Y position to spawn. The name of the entity, the X and the Y position. If we are too lazy and we don't put the X and the Y position in, we shall make the function do it for on its own. So if if not X, then if X doesn't exist, then X equals zero. And same with the Y. I'm just gonna put the end here to be safe. Then we're gonna check if the entity exists in the register. So if register name, if the list register contains uh, the name, the object with that uh, name that we brought in here, then do all the stuff. Else, if it didn't exist in reg register, let's make it print an error message. Error. And you remember, print the print function, printed a, a, a printed a message into the debugging console. So error, enti entity name does not exist. Exclamation mark. Snap. There we go. Then we want the function to return false, which is going to be useful later. I'll show you that time comes. 
Then, for each time we create successfully create a new entity, we want it to the ID to increase by one. By doing this, we always have a unique number for each uh, successfully made entity. Local ent is going the value the local value ent is going to be the same as the register for that entity which contains the data needed, the basic template for the entity. Then we want to run the load function that we created for that entity, which we're going to do in the next part. We also want it to set the position of the entity, which is going to be a function we create in the next part, and set the ID, which we just made. The entity is also a list, as you can see. To run a function that is in a table, or, or a list as I call it, you um, you just do it like this, like I've done here. I'll, I'll show you in the next part how this works. Ends, objects, and then the number of objects in the objects list plus one. So we can create a new entity right after all the others in the list. Then we want to return the entity we just made, and that is the amount of entities in the list. When you put a square sign and the table name, it will return the amount of objects in that list table. So if we have four objects in the game that is active, this will return four. If I did say four, I hope I said four. And add one to it so we can make a new entity in the list. A new entity on the list. And then return the entity we just put in the list. Uh, let's run the game just to check if we have any errors. No, seems fine. Everything is clear. So let's stop there and we'll continue in the next part by adding entities. So rate, comment and subscribe and I'll see you later.